ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, I am the pixelated incarnation of some guy. And thank you very much for choosing to watch this condensed version of Overanalyzed Adventures. For today, we're going to be checking out a game entitled Black Sails the Ghost Ship by Deck 13. Huh, I just realized this. Deck 13's logo is a sail ship. And this game's about, well, a sail ship. That's some synergy right there. But nevertheless. Now this game originally came out in Germany a few years ago, but has now seen a new English release. So ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, let's just cut to the chase and begin the over-analysis of this game. So the game boots up to this rather elegant looking menu screen with some fancy cursive font that personally I had a very difficult time reading. Now I know what you're thinking, guy, didn't you learn cursive in school? Yes indeed, I did learn cursive writing in school. It's just that this font, for whatever reason my brain could not comprehend, it seemed so small, so running together, so difficult to read. And unfortunately there is no way to change the font. And it's kind of a nagging issue in this game, at least for me, because a lot of the lore is told through little letters you find with this font being used. So yeah, I missed out on a fair bit of the lore. But nevertheless, it did not stop me from finding the new game button and beginning a new game. So the game's intro is one of those minimalistic, it looks like concept art, but oh look, we animated it style of intros. And the year is 1886, so yeah, these are the olden times. Basically, we see our protagonist. She's a journalist from New York. She's on a ship going to Europe. And oh lord, a storm hits and it's gone all Titanic on us. But fortunately, we survive along with some other guy. And we make our way to some sail ship, likely the aforementioned ghost ship. And no, it's not spoilers, you can see the thing in the title screen. Come on! <sighs> ah, don't worry about it, they're both perfectly fine. Where are we? Looks like the captain's cabin. And he's right about that, we are in the captain's cabin. And gentleman over here, his name is Lex. He's kind of a vagabond little bad boy. He picks up a gun. And naturally, our heroine is a little bit uncomfortable with a complete stranger having a loaded gun. But before we get back to the game, I want to point out one thing about this guy's face. Now I guess these are supposed to be birthmarks on his face or something, but to me, it looks like he got cookie crumbs all over his face. I imagine it's probably a real photo of a person that they kind of mapped over a 3D model, but yeah, I found those little birthmark cookie crumbs to be a little bit distracting. But fortunately for me, Lex is such a jerk, I know part of my French, that I didn't really want to spend that much time with him, so I didn't really look at him a whole lot. Right. Not bad. Hey, what are you doing? Keep your shirt on, okay? I beg your pardon? Till we've met the crew, we should be ready for anything. You can't just walk around and steal things, uh, mister. Well, you're not gonna get very far in an adventure game with logic like that. Call me Lex. Lex. I'm Anna. Good, it's only been about 10 minutes and we finally know our heroine's name. But nevertheless, I wasn't lying when I said that Lex is a jerk. There's no we, understood? You do whatever suits you, but don't count me in. Don't you see that all of this concerns both of us? Don't you see that you're getting on my nerves? Now the game's trying to tell us right here that our choices will affect the game's outcome. Well, that's not really true until the very end of the game. As far as I can tell this early on, what we say to Lex really has no bearing on the game's plot at all. Nice, neutral, or jerky, he pretty much acts the same regardless of our choices. And since I think he's a jerk and kind of a creep with cookie crumb face, I decided to let him have it because I believe in strong female protagonists. If your actions are going to live up to your poor manners, we'll run into serious trouble. You got a problem with my behavior? Looking for trouble? Nah, we ain't looking for trouble, but we may be needing to look for a napkin for your damn face. You shouldn't forget who's the strongest here. Wow, way to endear yourself and make thinly veiled threats at us, Lex. I don't like you at all. In fact, I hope something bad happens to you because I really don't like the cut of your jive. So anyway, we finally get done speaking to old jerkwad over here, and now we have a chance to navigate the room. Now the first puzzle we are presented with is an escape the room puzzle. The captain's door is locked from the inside with a wooden padlock, and no, we're not going to be able to shoot off the lock because big old jerk face over here has a gun, and he's just going to keep it for himself, likely to threaten us with later on if he has his way. But nevertheless, in order to unlock this door, we gotta first unlock a chest, and to do this, we gotta find little bits of code that are scattered across the room. I know what kind of convoluted adventure gamey thing to do, but it's not too difficult in adventure See, oh my god, the chest is unlocked, and we got some stuff, and a bit of lore that I can't read inside of it. What? How did you manage to open that lock? The captain seems to have a thing for puzzles. The combination was split and hidden in a couple of notes. A crowbar would have done the trick faster. If I put a crowbar in your hands, 
I'd be afraid of you wrecking the whole cabin. Hey, don't be cheeky, lady. Yeah, I know, this game actively goes out of its way to make Lex such an endearing co-star. But nevertheless, with our newfound items, we are able to open up a new area of the game to get more items that will help us unlock the door. And of course, along the way, you can have chats with Lex that sound well. How about we just hear what he has to say for himself? Do you know a thing or two about knots? I've been at sea on a schooner for six years. Is that enough? There's a knot back there. I can't untie it. What a pity. I'd be delighted to help you out with that. Thank you. Not free of charge, of course. Now, before we get back to the delightful conversation we're having with Lex, I should point out that there are a couple of instances in this game where there are multiple solutions to a puzzle, and these multiple solutions revolve around using Lex or not. Granted, it's not that sophisticated, but it does add a nice little bit of spice to this game, because if you use an item instead of Lex, well, you lost the item, so you can't use that item for a puzzle later on, and then maybe you have to use Lex. It doesn't happen a whole lot. I can actually only think of maybe two or three times we actually have multiple solutions to a puzzle, but hey, it's pretty fun, and it spices the game up just a little bit. But with that said, let's get back to listening to our conversation with Lex. So, tell me what you have to offer. <laughs> oh? And what is it that you have in mind? Well, should you come across something valuable while you're poking around this cabin, I might be interested in it. Or you could show me some other pretty things that you might have on you. Yes, he is talking about our lady parts there, and yes, that is a rapey statement he made right there. Yeah, I don't like Lex at all. And I'm serious there, he's not a very sympathetic or nice character. I really don't care what happens to him, and I don't like him. And I can't imagine anyone in this situation would feel all that comfortable around him, or safe. I mean, he has a gun, and he's threatening us, and he wants to see our lady parts. Yeah, this situation's not very nice that we are in. Best we get away from Lex, right? Unfortunately, we can, by attaching the harpoon to a lock and throwing out the window. Yes, that is an extremely adventure game thing we just did there. We attached a harpoon to a lock and threw it out the window. But hey, it worked. The door is open now, and oh, look what happens to Lex. Done! The door's open. Let's go look for the captain. Just a moment. What now? I haven't quite finished reading the logbook. And there's other bits of paper lying around. You mean that you haven't got enough loot? You've got a problem with that? I've had enough. I'm off. Oh, no, you don't. You're staying right here. Yes, this is a very hostile situation we're in. It sounds like he's going to do something terrible to us. Get off. That jerk deserved it. It seemed like he was about to do something really bad to us and trying to control us. But fortunately for us, all those boxes fell on top of him. And now he's no longer a threat to us. And we can just carry on with our lives. And oh no, that's not what's going to happen, is it? Lex! Uh, I didn't want that to happen. Yeah, I have no sympathy for Lex at all. If it was me, I'd just leave him where he lays, but our protagonist, nah, she's not feeling that. Instead, she's gonna go off and look for some bandages for him. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna look for bandages for Lex, and that's gonna eat up a good chunk of the runtime here. So with Lex all down and out and bleeding out, we now have access to the ship proper. And you know, now that I think about it, it's kind of like we're in a reverse princess scenario here. Except our princess is a threatening jerk who, frankly, I think we should leave to die. But, my thoughts aside, we now have access to this ship. All dozen or so rooms of it. Yeah, this is a pretty small game and this is a pretty tiny map. Although it kind of deceives you how big it is by using all these Resident Evil style camera tricks that make the room seem bigger than they actually are. But at the end of the day, it's a pretty small map and a pretty tiny game. But with all that aside, we now have to pick up everything that isn't nailed down. And fortunately for us, there's hotspot detection, although it's a bit dodgy. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't show items, although you can pick them up. And in fact, there's a lot of little technical hiccups here and there with this game. Sometimes the audio drops out, there's graphical glitches, and there's just little things here and there that kind of show you the budget of this game. But nevertheless, after exploring the ship for a while, we get trapped in a room. Ouch. I need to be more careful. (laughs) 
Now that's some pretty decent atmospheric horror right there. Now this game really isn't scary, at least in the oh my god I'm scared sense, but it does have a nice creepy atmosphere and an eerie vibe going throughout it. And hell, there's no jump scares, which is pretty nice to see in a horror game for once. But atmosphere aside, this game is not afraid to recycle its situations. We are trapped in another room, and we need to escape it. But this time, there's no open windows or harpoons. Instead, we have to bring down some crates, and then take the wood from them and rebuild the stairs. And oh yeah, along the way, pick up everything in this room, because there's a bunch of items we're going to need later on. Who's there? Calm down, Anna. It's just your imagination. Now that's kind of spooky, but really it comes down to what do you think about whale sounds. But nevertheless, as you would imagine, we pretty much explore the whole ship and pick up everything that we can. And while the game seems a bit open, it's still a linear adventure game. Meaning that most of the key items are locked behind things that you cannot unlock until you find a thing to unlock it with. And all of this has to be done in a fixed linear order with a little bit of plot sprinkled in between each key finding. Although they're not always keys. Like in this case, we have to use a drill on the lock to get into the medical wing. Which we do! And from here we pick up all the necessary material to go back to Lex and fix him up. There are bandages, a thin thread, and a needle in the bag. So with bandages and other oddities in hand, we make our way back to Lex who's now sitting at the captain's desk doing whatever he does. Thank God. You're brilliant. I've got to take a rest. I don't feel well. Quite weak. Maybe it was a mistake to board this ship. Yeah, and now that Lex is all weak and vulnerable, he suddenly changed his tune and isn't trying to power play us. Yeah, I still don't have any sympathy for this guy. And as to his other point about we should have never boarded this ship, what well, should we have done? Just stood adrift in sea, in the storm, dying? Yeah. It seems like it's better to be on the safe, warmest ship. Although it does have spooky sounds, but really, it seems better than the ocean. Wait. I've got something for you. That's my bag. Where did you... did you steal it? It, it kind of fell into my hand when we were in the water. I... I'm sorry? While Lex talk about building up trust. But hey, we needed the bag anyway. It had some key items in it that we're gonna need later on. But now burdened with new items flooding our inventory, we have a new quest. And that's get medicine for Lex. I know, we've already bandaged him up, we already saved him from the falling boxes, and now we have to find morphine or something for him. Looks like a sick room. Maybe I can find medicine for Lex in here. But oh no, there's boxes blocking our way. Good thing there's a crane that we can get operational again, and then use to move the boxes out of the way with. Yeah, they seem to really be lingering on that door. Kind of looks like Hal from 2001. I wonder if there's anything sinister about it. It seems to be locked. <laughs> oh my god, that scream came from the room behind this door. Oh, I thought it was you for a second, lady. Sounded like the same voice actress. What kind of strange light is this? I... I feel so weak. Oh damn, Hal's got her now. I'm sorry, Anna. I'm afraid I can't do that. Ah, the effect of the drug is lessening. Can you hear me? Where am I? Speak when you're spoken to, girl. You're at high sea with no sight of land for far and wide. My parents... I... Your parents are the first Where? thing to come into your mind? That almost surprises me. Who are you? Where am I? I'm Dr. Eduardo Juarez. Just call me doctor. I'm so very keen to find out what's going on inside your head. What? Leave me alone! I want to go home! Now that's impossible. You can never go home again. Leave me alone, please! I can't do that. Why? Who are you? I'll check on you later. The two of us are going to spend a long, long time together. Yeah, about halfway through the game and all of a sudden we're a little girl now. Now here's a little treasure. I needed to see you with my own eyes. I'm Cesar, so you're called Fiona. What a sweet name. And you are really lovely, lovely hair. I'll come back later when my shift is done. Then I'll check up on you. God damn, this game is turning me off, man. 
Now we got a pedophile. So obviously we're going to have to find a way out of this situation that seems inescapable. Good thing we suddenly hear a voice through the walls. Don't you recognize my voice? It's me, Reuben. Reuben? Did you forget about me, sister? So, you're my brother. Oh, Fiona, what have they done to you? I don't know. Don't believe a word that the grown-ups say. They don't want to help you. No one on board will. This is a smuggler ship. It sails the seven oceans with its pitch black sails billowing, carrying locked up children. Yeah, that's pretty messed up. So obviously we're going to have to find a way to escape this ship. And to do so is going to require us to tread over familiar ground. That's right, we're back in the captain's cabin. I'm going to pick up some stuff and figure out a way off this ship by causing a mild fire. Ugh, oh, that stinks. Hey, look! The machine room's speaking to. Smoke? What the? The machine room's on fire! The barrels. We need to get in there now. Captain, that's madness. We'll all be gone as. Come on, you cowards. Into the machine room, or else we're all gonna be blown to pieces. There's not much time, but we can still prevent it. Damn it. All oh, yours, Captain. What am I supposed to do now? You need to defeat the bad men. Make them get weak or tired. I can't. You can make them weak or fall asleep. You will find a way. Yeah, we're going to poison their food, which they're eating in the mess hall, which we've already visited before. And to be honest with you, I do like how they change the cameras for the parts where you play as a little girl. You do get a sense for how big these rooms are, and you also get a sense for how frustrating the camera can be to work with. Should I really do this? Or maybe I can just run away before they come back. I know she's a little girl and she probably doesn't understand the situation she's in, but really, I don't feel any sympathy towards a crew that seems like they're trying to rape a little girl. So yeah, we're gonna poison their food and live with the consequences. But where did the smoke come from? I mean, we didn't just imagine it, did we? Maybe a stupid rat caught fire. Can we go on eating now, please? Sure. Dig in. Uh, I don't feel too good. Me neither. Ugh. Doctor, what's going on with us? I need to catch some fresh air. Me too. Good work. Now you can get out of here. So that does it for the entire, what, three-man crew that seems to be running the ship? You know, I thought a sail ship would take more than, you know, three dudes to run, but what do I know? Except, well, now we're free. But first we gotta free our brother, because, you know, he's locked up in the cell next to us. You know, the Haldor cell. So here you are. I knew that you'd cause trouble. I should have given you a larger dose of the medication. Now, we don't want a tragic accident to happen. I... I... Well, that's pretty damn freaky now, isn't it? I wonder what's going to happen next. Well, you're just going to wait and see, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between for part two of the over-analysis of Black Sails. See you then, hopefully. Bye-bye.